Hi, today I'll be uh, refuting Elizabeth's claim of fact that abortion is harmful to society. Her three supporting claims are that abortion is used to control minority populations, abortion causes emotional distress, and lastly, abortion clinics are students with bad reputation. For her first point that abortion is used to control minority populations, she uses an example from 2007 of audio recordings of a man named James O'Keefe pretending to be a racist donor to Planned Parenthood abortion clinics. The audio recordings consist of Mr. O'Keefe um, asking whether he can specifically donate money to black mothers. The Planned Parenthood re representative replied, this is the first time I have had a donor call and make this kind of request. This is only one example, which wasn't even a real request to begin with. Clearly this, clearly this type of request is rare. In fact, the Planned Parenthood representative said that she had never been asked such a request. Even if such donations were happening, racist people donating money only to black mothers has very little to do with minority populations being controlled by abortion. At the end of the day, women who decide to get abortions will go to abortion clinics and get an abortion. According to Abort73.com, 85% of abortions are performed on women who are single, and about three quarters of women who get abortions say that they don't have the time or money to support a child. So women who decide to continue with abortion because they don't have the means to support a child do so regardless of donations. Her second supporting claim is that abortion causes emotional distress. To support her claim, she uses an example from Health Weekly stating that women who had an abortion had a higher risk of depression compared to women who went through with their unintended pregnancy. <coughs> She also uses the accounts of a few women who say that they were embarrassed or regretful of their abortion. These few women had similar reasons for having their abortions, and whatever those reasons may, may be, whether because of fear, shame, or financial instability, they all made the decision on their own. No one forced, that, no one forced them to have an abortion. These women chose to be irresponsible and because of that had an abortion and must deal with consequences. As far as women who have abortions because they are rape victims go, Less than 1% of all abortions are of women who are raped. And these women often choose to abort because these, um, these ba uh, this baby would remind them of a scarring event from their past. And in her argument, Elizabeth says that this is unhealthy for our society because we wouldn't want our society to be depressed. We should have them feel happy with their actions. So without abortion, this wouldn't be happy. What about women who become depressed, depressed because they couldn't have an abortion? Maybe now their lives are worse and more financially unstable and it's because we can't get an abortion. Wouldn't that cause depression and be bad for society as well? Or how about women that suffer from postpartum depression, which is a type of depression that affects women right after childbirth? You can't blame women's depression solely on, on abortion and say that without abortion, depression wouldn't be a problem because that is not true. Her final supporting claim is that abortion clinics are starting to get a bad reputation, and I don't know what that has to do with or how it relates to the main claim, that abortion is harmful to society. I'm sure you've all heard about Donald Sterling and the Clippers. He obviously has a bad reputation, but does that mean the NBA is a bad association? And wouldn't abortion clinics getting a bad reputation lead to less abortions anyway? So this supporting claim contradicts her argument. For this supporting claim, she again uses Planned Parenthood as an Example saying that their main motive is to try and make money off of abortions. And she goes on to say, so they're convincing women to get abortions and stuff like that, which in my opinion is unhealthy because women should get abortions because they want to, not because they're persuaded to. And also I think abortions should be used to help a woman who is not ready for a pregnancy and not getting it just to pay money to support companies who are um, just wanting the money for no reason. First she says that abortion is harmful. But then she says that she thinks that women deserve the right to have an abortion if they aren't ready. Then she says that women get abortions just to pay money to support companies who just want the money for no reason, which makes no sense. What women would, what women would get an abortion to support a company? There are plenty of reasons why women get abortions, and supporting a company by paying for an abortion is not one of them. In conclusion, my opponents claims that abortion is used to control minority populations abortion causes emotional distress, and abortion clinics are starting to get a bad reputation, fail to prove her main claim that abortion is harmful to our society. Thank you.
All right, Jonathan, the uh, main and secondary points are laid out clearly. The O'Keefe example is challenged. I think that you've got an interesting way of expressing it because the worker says, look, this was a rare case. We never had this kind of thing before. And the idea, therefore, that it's automatically racist is strange because it is so rare. I think that that's an inconsistency in uh, the argument that the advocate's presenting. And you explain that pretty well. Uh, the notion that the primary motivation for abortion uh, is among single women who claim that they can't afford it, I think that's a pretty strong argument that also talks about this issue, that it's not being targeted specifically at a particular group. Although I think there might be other arguments on this issue that would be relevant, uh, the proof that's being presented by the advocate, I think you've got, done a pretty good job responding to that point. On the second issue, I think that there's a little bit of confusion here because I don't think, first of all, that you uh, are, are making the right inference about what the advocate's claim here is. The advocate's not saying that depression uh, is primarily caused by abortion. They're saying that people who get abortions get depressed because they've had those abortions. And so I, I think you're kind of hitting at a straw man argument or a false assumption about what's going on here when you challenge all of the other kinds of things. Now, I do think that there's a good you know, a couple of good counterclaims that apply here that could use some proof. The notion there's postpartum depression or, for instance, that somebody might be depressed because they don't have access to abortion and they are, they are afraid about bad things happening to their lives. I think that's all, um, you know, a potential good counterclaim, but there's no evidence on either of those points. Uh, postpartum depression, we can kind of take as a given, although I don't know how frequent that is. And that's one of the problems here. We can't really compare the percentages because the advocate doesn't have a percentage about the number of women who have abortions who get depressed. And you don't have any evidence about women who give birth who have postpartum depression. So I'm not sure how we would balance that out. Uh, the notion, for instance, that um, women uh, might be depressed as a result of not having access to abortion, that could be answered uh, or that could be supported, for instance, by uh, a survey of women who had kids and they say, oh, I hate having kids, that sort of thing. I, I would imagine if we had the longer argument on this, if this was a debate and we were going to have the back and forth, that the response from the advocate in this situation would be, if you ask women who've had children, if they are glad they've had their children, you'll find that there's a relatively tiny, tiny percentage of people who say, oh, yes, I'm, you know, I really wish I hadn't had this child. It's usually the other way around. Um, so I think that there's a little bit of, um, like I said, uh, I, we would call that fallacy, hypostatization, where you are, are taking something and treating it as if this is the argument when it is not really that argument. It's uh, maybe more an irrelevant thesis on that particular point. On the third point, um, there's some argument about uh, the financial issue. That got a little bit confusing. I did think that there was an argument about inconsistency that sounded sort of valid, but I think your analysis also um, on this point kind of misunderstands the argument that the advocate was presenting as well. I did think that you did a nice job speaking to the audience and presenting the argument, and that's pretty effective. Hang on one second. All right, Brenda, let's have you next, please. I think Brenda's going to be our last speaker for the evening. Aren't you glad? Yes. You'll have it out of the way. You won't have to be thinking about it later.